Hi, welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. Um, what made Mansa Musa such a, um, a formidable ruler of the Empire of Mali? Welcome. Uh, please subscribe if you've not yet done so. Um, and help share our videos. That's the only way you can sustain us. Now, I know a lot of uh, people have criticized Mansa Musa and said things like, if he had maybe if he had been a little more modest and not so extravagant with uh, showing off his gold when he went on that famous pilgrimage to Mecca, maybe Europeans would have remained um, in the dark about how much wealth we had in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. But I very much doubt it. The, the truth of the matter is that Europe was in such um, in such dire straits that for them, it was a question of find a source of sustenance or perish. So whether Mansa Musa, uh, whether they, uh, they found out uh, about the gold through um, his trip to Egypt or not, they would have still was already interested in finding resources which they didn't have. And so they were already making inroads uh, into Africa. But I actually believe that Mansa Musa achieved some really remarkable things as an emperor. Under Mansa Musa, Mali expanded to cover an area which was equal in landmass to the size of all of Western Europe. He organized the empire into provinces which were governed by local leaders. This allowed law and order to be maintained throughout the land. Merchants traded freely in caravans across the empire. He also went into alliance with independent neighboring kingdoms and maintained a standing army of a hundred thousand soldiers, including cavalrymen mounted on horses and camels. In, uh, in 1325, during his pilgrimage, which we've talked about in uh, previous episodes, his deputy, the, the, the fact that his deputies remained loyal to him you know, speaks about the kind of ruler he was. So his deputies remained loyal to him, and under one of them, they made incursions into Songhai, which at this time was beginning to emerge as another force in the area. Mansa Musa's army captured the capital uh, city of Songhai, which was Gao. And when he was told of this victory, Mansa Musa, who was on his way back from Mecca, decided to make a detour to consolidate this conquest. He therefore went to Gao to receive the pledge of allegiance from the ruler of Songhai himself. In order to ensure the loyalty the, of this ruler to the pledge he made, Mansa Musa took two of the ruler's sons with him back to live as um, um, you can call them hostages, um, but the official um, reason was that they were going to be guests. But everybody knows that usually when a, a leader's son is taken to live in the court of another, it's a kind of hostage holding because it is actually to raise those uh, sons in a way that would see the, uh, the ruler they are living with in a favorable way Usually they become assimilated into his family and then um, so that when they eventually become rulers in their own countries, they, they will, uh, there will be peace. Sometimes children like that end up marrying, you know, children from their host families. So he took these two boys, uh, two young sons uh, of the ruler of uh, Songhai back with him to Mali. Now, under Musa, Many more cities flourished. Examples of such cities were, like I said earlier, um, Gao, Walata, and Timbuktu. 
he, his impact on Timbuktu is particularly remarkable because Mansa Musa supported the founding of um, of what was called uh, madrasas, which emerged from mosques and became citadels of learning long before most countries in Europe even dreamt of such institutions which were de uh, dedicated to the generation of, uh, of knowledge. The University of Sankori, which was founded out of these institutions, you know, is one of the earliest in the world. Under him, trade and commerce increased and uh, copper mining also joined the mining of salt, uh, gold and other precious uh, minerals. All these increased the income of the government because more taxes came in. Uh, because even the common people, and, and because more taxes came in, even the common people prospered. Mansa Musa died in 1332 and was succeeded by his son, Magan, who was not nearly as gifted as his father. The empire started declining under Magan's reign. Uh, first, Timbuktu was invaded and captured. Then, the two Songhai princes that Mansa Musa had brought back with him from Gao in order to ensure their father's loyalty escaped. Um, and I think it's also instructive to note that they, es they did not escape while Mansa Musa was alive, but e escaped after his son died. So they might not have been treated as well. I mean, but I'm just inferring here, but it is possible that they were not treated as well uh, under Magan as they were when, when uh, Mansa Musa was alive. Anyway, so the, these two uh, Songhai princes um, escaped and they returned to Gao, and then they set up a new dynasty. Magan's uh, in, uh, in, in, in Gao. Magan's reign only lasted about four years and he was succeeded by uh, Mansa Musa's brother who managed to hold on to the empire and was in turn succeeded by a number of equally unremarkable rulers who only managed to sustain, um, just keep the empire going. Now, around 1481, the rulers in the substantively weakened empire now made one of the most drastic errors, you know, that a lot of other rulers made. They offered Portuguese mercenaries. I mean, they, they hired Portuguese mercenaries who offered their services to help them fight Songhai. The move was, of course, unsuccessful. And although Mali wobbled along for another about another 200 years, its glory days were long over. So, uh, meanwhile, by uh, 1475, the new dynasty, which had been founded in Songhai, became the major power in the area. Uh, we'll continue with the with the empire of Songa in the next episode please give us a thumbs up if you like our, our, our videos help share with your friends that's how you sustain us keep your questions coming and keep engaging uh, with our community see you next time